Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're, today's topic is how does my Glock work? One of my favorite things as an armor instructor to use is a, is a visual is a cutaway. And I know a lot of people like to use animations. They like to do all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I guess I'm more of an old school where I like to use uh, factory cutaways. Uh, cutaways tend to be, uh, in my opinion, the easiest way to see exactly what's going on in there because when you pull the trigger, you know, the gun just doesn't magically work. There's all kinds of things that are going on inside of there. And with the Glock is particularly interesting because people say there's no safety. Well, there's actually three safeties in here and you're about to see how each one of them works. Now, of course, the ammunition you see in here, these are dummies. They are, under, they are not live rounds. In fact, the firing pin is, too, is short. It cannot reach the uh, primer even if it was. So what you're seeing here is all dummy ammunition. The Glock is uh, what we refer to as safe action. Um, it's not double action, it's not single action. Uh, they call it safe action. Uh, if you look at the trigger pull on it, it feels more as a single action to me, where other people will say that it's uh, it's more double action. Um, you know, when you when you pull when you pull back on there, you have that short trigger pull, so that leads you to say more single action. Well, I'll Glock got rid of that by just basically saying safe action. It's its own mechanism. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right into this, uh, disassemble. And we also have a, a mag the magazine, which is a cutaway as well. You can see how it's a double column magazine. It's a double column magazine that, that comes to a single feed. So inside the magazine, it's staggered. It's a, it's a double column up to one for feeding. Now looking, we can see everything right here. Uh, the first thing I want you to take a look at up here is the striker. Up here you have what's referred to as the firing pin block. You have the slide stop. You have the slide lock. Now people get these two mixed up. The slide stop is what locks it open. Slide lock is what holds it for disassembly or reassembly. Here you can see the trigger bar. And you can also see how the uh, the barrel cams, and, cams with the locking block, which we're going to see how all that works in a, in a moment. We can see the, the, open, the open barrel which we can see the hammer forged uh, rifling that's in there. We can see that there's no uh, distinguishable lands and grooves. Okay, the first thing I really want to go over here is what's referred to as safe action by having safeties. There are three internal safeties that make this gun probably one of the safest firearms in the face of the earth to be able to carry. First off, what we have is the trigger safety, and we can see that right here. As you can see, when you pull the trigger to the rear, it will not move. When you push in on the trigger safety, now, it allows it to go rearward. The next is referred to as the firing pin block, and that can be seen right here. Now, as you watch when the trigger is pulled to the rear, you can see how that is lift, the, the trigger bar lifts upward on that. And now what's happening is, as the trigger is being pulled, the striker is being pulled to the rear, and now with the trigger being pulled almost all the way, now we have the firing pin block disengaged. As the trigger is pulled to the rear, now we have what's referred to as the drop safety. Now, Depending the way this cutaway is, is you can't necessarily see uh, from the left hand side, but you can see in the rear, you can see where the trigger bar is is contacted with the striker. When the trigger is pulled all the way to the rear, the drop safety disengages, which is what releases the striker to fire the pistol. So that's three. When you pull the trigger to the rear prior to firing, you have the trigger safety disengaged, firing pin safety disengaged but we still have the drop safety engaged. If we are to release the trigger, they're gonna re-engage in that same order. As you pull forward, it's gonna, it's gonna re-engage the firing pin safety, and when you release the trigger, you're gonna re-engage the trigger safety. So those are, the three, those are the three internal safeties and how they work. So what we're gonna take a look at now is how the unlocking process takes place. Now we notice here we have the barrel locking surface, and now we have here, which is the locking block. Once the, once the trigger is pulled, the slide starts to move rearward. We can see how the barrel is engaged by the locking block. Now the locking surfaces unlock, allowing the slide to go all the way to the rear, extract and eject the fired cartridge case, recoil spring returns forward to load. Now what we're going to take a look at is how the extractor works as well. Once again, these are dummy rounds. Now we can see from the top here, we can see how the extractor engages the rim. Very easily seen. 
as you can see right into here, this is in the cock position, so you can see how the striker is held in place by the drop safety. Right in here, you see the ejector. So as we would fire the cartridge, we would go to the rear. Now as you watch through the slot, you'll be able to see the ejector strike the cartridge case to knock it out of the receiver. We saw the fire, unlock, extract, eject, chamber, feed, lock. Now, when we talk about trigger pulls, this is what's referred to as the connector, and you can see the angle that we have here. And this is the trigger bar itself. So what this does is it actuates the drop safety. So as we pull the trigger, we can see that it engages. Then as we pull all the way to the rear, it drops down to release the striker. Now for those of you who have interest in different trigger weights, the steeper the angle, the lighter the trigger pull will be. For instance, if you were to have a, um, a light connector in here or the uh, three and a half pound connector, this is gonna be a much sharper angle. And it's also gonna have, a, I believe, a negative on it. And then by increasing that angle, you're gonna be getting a, a much heavier trigger pull. Now, the trigger pull is controlled by two things. One is going to be the connector itself. The connector is going to be a combination of the connector and the type of a trigger return spring or leaf spring that you use. So we're able to see this one more time. Insert. Load. Now, again, we see our extractor engaged on the, on the rim. We see that our barrel is now in the lock position, fully forward. It's engaged in the front and in the rear of the barrel hood. So now we're in the lock position. As we pull the trigger, first we're gonna, we're gonna release the, firing, the trigger safety. You can see that rotate out of the way. And as we pull back the trigger, we can see the strikers being pulled rearward. Now we can see the firing pin block rising to get out of the way. Also, as we notice in the rear, as the trigger is pulled to the rear, we can see the striker and we can see the trigger bar pulling the rearward on the striker. We get all the way to the rear, we have the trigger safety disengaged, firing pin safety disengaged, trigger is pulled all the way to its rearmost position, and now, now at the last moment before firing, we are now pulling the trigger. We're seeing right here the connector, and we're seeing the, the nose of the trigger bar. As we pull downward, releases the drop safety to fire. So now once the projectile has left the barrel, we now unlock. We can see the location here of the barrel and the locking block as it now unlocks. Now we're going to flip it over and you're going to see right through this notch here, you're going to see how the ejector works. As the slide comes all the way to the rear, strikes the ejector, extraction ejects the fire cartridge case, strip a new round off of the magazine, everything re-engages, we're locked, ready to fire the next round, and as you can see, all the safeties now that I release the trigger are re-engaged. You have the trigger safety engaged, frame pin blocks engaged, connector, and the uh, drop safety is now engaged. This particular cutaway is a Glock Gen 4 Model 17. Uh, Glock makes quite a few of these to their international customers and a lot of their law enforcement customers. Uh, for training armors, uh, this thing is awesome. When you have the understanding of the cycle of operations, it allows you to pinpoint uh, the exact cycle where the malfunction is taking place. For instance, if you're having a failure to eject, well, you know that it's not your extractor. You know it's not your recoil spring. You know what parts are involved in the uh, ejection process, just like you know what parts are involved in the extraction process. So it enables you to uh, into much more so understand uh, troubleshooting. Uh, so they're very, very, very valuable. Some of the things I want to mention to you also about uh, about this. One of the things that people do a lot of times is they will take uh, and drop the round into the chamber and let the slide go. Now, on some guns, such as the Beretta, which have a pivoting extractor, um, that's not a problem. With Glocks, it's generally not a good idea because the way this, this is designed is when the cartridge goes up into the chamber, the rear of the rim of the cartridge case slides up under the extractor. The extractor does not snap over it. So um, I would highly recommend when you load this pistol, you always load from the magazine. You don't drop around into the, uh, into the uh, chamber. Will it work? Yeah, it will work. It'll tear the hell out of your your uh, rim, 
Uh, it will also uh, can eventually damage your extractor as well, so it's something I would highly recommend against uh, when you load it, load it from the magazine. And also when you unload, allow it to round to drop to the ground, don't try to put your hand over it. Um, there has been instances with several pistols, including this one, that uh, when you do that, you know, all it takes is that, that ejector to strike that primer, and that round's going off. Other issues that we will discuss, you can talk about with, uh, for as far as the underwater frame that you see on television, uh, and on YouTube channels, well, what that refers to is you have your firing pin cups that are located right here. Now, this is fully round, so these are not designed for underwater use. So when you try firing this underwater, the round firing pin cups with this channel here create like a hydraulic pressure, which can generally prevent you from being able to pull the trigger. Uh, for the maritime firing cups, these are, there are slits cut in here, which allow water to flow through, which allows you to be able to pull the trigger all the way through. So this is the channel that they, they refer to as uh, where that, that all happens, uh, whether it's maritime or whether it's not. You also can see uh, the, the extractor. This is a, when it has a rounded chamber, it sticks out so you can fill it with your, with your thumb. Now this is only on the Gen 3s, 4s, and 5s. Uh, the original 1s and 2s did not have this extractor. But you're able to see how everything works. It's very important to, to understand you know, how the connector works. Uh, for those of you who like to uh, change the trigger pulls, you know, I have several Glocks. I'll leave my trigger pulls the exact same way, uh, the exact combination of the five and a half pound uh, connector, connector and the standard spring. Um, but uh, at least you can get a little bit of understanding from here of what it, what it takes to have that lighter trigger pull, that the angles that you have on, uh, on that make a difference uh, as to having a heavier or a lighter pull. And again, the trigger springs as well, the uh, trigger return spring, whether you use the standard coil spring or you have the, the leaf springs, uh, which make the thing ungodly heavy. Uh, that's important to understand. Now, a lot of you people also like to go take these guns and, and put all these aftermarket uh, parts on them, springs and so forth. You like to take weight off it. I do want to address that a little bit because uh, it's somewhat disturbing to me. Now, the way you see this pistol designed right here is the way it works anytime, anywhere, in all kinds of weather without problems. And it's all a balance. It's a balance of the weight of the slide, the recoil spring, the striker spring, the, the connector. This is a whole super secret formula for having a gun that works reliably all the time. A lot of you guys like to go in there and you like to shave off weight out of the, out of the slide. Well, that alters the, the mechanism. It alters the, uh, the inertia that goes back and forth, which can cause issues. You start messing around with different types of springs, uh, different kinds of uh, connectors you are risking the reliability uh, that this pistol is known for. For law enforcement, I, I've i always trained everybody in law enforcement. For duty guns, you only use the factory components. You do not mess with any components. You stay with the factory components because that's how you're going to guarantee your reliability, your durability, and the things are going to work every time you pull the trigger. You know, for somebody who's out shooting at the range or whatnot, you want to mess around with all that stuff, you know, that's fine. It's not life and death. Uh, but for those of you who are carrying these guns in the real world, I would really uh, implore that you do not put any non-Glock parts in here for that reason. Again, it's designed to have a certain spring, a certain weight. All this stuff works together. You know, the way this pistol works is you have two springs that counter each other. Now, they're weighted, so as you pull the stri this striker back, there's enough weight on this recoil spring to keep the slide forward because you have two springs that are opposing. You start altering the trigger weights, now you're going to start pulling the trigger back and your slide's going to start unlocking. Um, these are just things that you don't want to mess with for as far as the barrels are concerned. You know, uh, some of you guys want to shoot lead, so you have to put an aftermarket barrel on there. You know, I guess so be it. Just make sure that your uh, the barrel is within spec. Um, the, the rifling that's in here is is the is, is polygonal hammer forged, same as the Gen Five. The Gen Gen Five is it has a hexagonal twist rather than you know the, the poly or octagonal, whatever other ones they have. But it's the same process. It's the same shallow rifling, so you do not want to fire lead in these. Um, there are plenty of companies that offer nice barrels uh, if you want to shoot lead. Silencer Co. has a has a very nice landing groove barrel. Wilson Combat has them. Uh, if you want to suppress it, of course, you have suppressed barrels. Uh, occasionally, you can get uh, suppressed barrels from Glock. Um, you know, I have uh, a couple Silencer Co. ones myself that work really well and shoot really accurate. But uh, for as far as the barrels are concerned, you want to make sure everything has spaces properly uh, as well. And again, for as far as law enforcement is concerned, stay with uh, with what you have. Uh, as a former forensic firearms examiner, you know the polygon barrels uh, or hammer release hammer barrels can be quite difficult to match. Um, however, um, that's our problem as firearms examiners, uh, not yours as a police officer or somebody who wants a barrel which can last you your entire career uh, that, that will never wear out on you. 
Um, so those are just, that's just my soapbox on people putting aftermarket components in carry guns. Um, you know, I have a lot, I have quite a few pistols and I can't think of any of them that I put anything that's not factory in them for that reason, is I want them to remain reliable. And once you alter something in the system, same thing with the M16 type rifles. It's designed around a specific cartridge, a specific pressures, or a specific part pressure, chamber pressure, rings, you know, recoil springs, all that stuff is all working as a system to give you that reliability. Same thing with this. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to leave me a comment. I'll try and get back to you. I do thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please click like, please subscribe, even better, share. Thank you.